and in the bottom of the first inning, leading things off against Tom Bolton. Yvonne Calderon hits this one into the net over the Green Monster. It's his eighth home run of the season, RBI number 50, and the White Sox lead it one to nothing. But in the bottom half of the second inning, Tom Bernanski up to bat against Jack McDowell. He calls timeout. Home plate umpire Jim Joyce didn't hear him, so that's a ball. Well, Tom Brunanski got ready on the next pitch. As McDowell was pitching for the Chicago White Sox, he hits this one deep to center field for his seventh home run of the season. RBI number 41. It's a solo shot, and it ties the score one apiece. Bruno last night, of course, snapped an 0 for 34 slump by getting three hits, and tonight he has two RBIs in the game. Still in the bottom of the second inning with the bases loaded. Jack McDowell will walk Carlos Quintana. And scoring on the play will be Boston Red Sox catcher Tony Pena. So it was 2-1 Boston after two. Is this L.A. dudes? That dude, of course, was Tom Pachorek, Chicago White Sox announcer. No, those are just those crazy fans out in right field. Bottom of the third inning now. Mike Greenwell will slap this single into left field. That scores Ellis Burks from third base. RBI number 35 for Greeny, and it's 3-1 Boston. Then Dwight Evans up to bat, and Dewey will triple right to the 420 sign out in center field. Scoring on the play is Greenwell, RBI number 45 for Dwight Evans. That gave them a 4-1 lead. Tom Brunanski added his second RBI of the game later on with an RBI single to make it 5-1. He moved over to second base on an error by Carlos Martinez. And then on a sacrifice bunt by Luis Rivera, he moved over to third. So with Jody Reed up to bat with one out still in the bottom of the third, he loops this single into left center field off of Jack McDowell. Bernanski scores from third, RBI number 34 for Reed, and it was 6-1 Boston. In the top of the eighth with the score 9-3 Boston, Carlton Fisk up against Rob Murphy, and the former Boston Red Sox catcher hits his 16th career home run against the Red Sox at Fenway. He is now too short of Johnny Bench's record. They give him a standing ovation. His 10th home run of the season, RBI number 35. That made it 9-4. to four. The final was 9-5 to five as the Red Sox sweep the three-game series from the Chicago White Sox, but they still appreciate Carlton Fisk at Fenway. On Wednesday night from Los Angeles, Roger Craig and the San Francisco Giants in town to take on Tommy Lasorda's Dodgers. And on the mound for Tommy Lasorda's Dodgers, Jim Nylinger making his first appearance as a major leaguer. He went six innings, striking out three, giving up one walk, and giving up seven hits. Here he ends the top of the second by striking out Jose Ribe looking. And Will Clark not playing tonight, but fooling around the dugout with Wendell Kim as he dumps some sunflower seeds on his head. In the top of the third inning, the Giants take the lead. Rick Leach up with one out and one on. He'll hit the line drive single in the left field off of Nylinger. Coming around to score is Brett Butler. Gibson doesn't make the throw. And it's 1-0 San Francisco. And Will Clark still at it. This time it's Bill Baith, the unsuspecting teammate, as Will drops some more sunflower seeds on Bill Baith's head in the dugout. In the bottom of the fourth inning now, Don Robinson, the pitcher for the San Francisco Giants. Kirk Gibson's bat almost hits him in the head, and they throw him out at first base Close call for Don Robinson, but he was able to go all the way for the complete game victory. In the bottom of the fifth inning now, Mike Sosha up to bat against Don Robinson, and he'll tie this game up with the one-out solo shot. It's his 10th home run of the season. RBI number 46 as Kingery looks at that one, and it's all tied up at one apiece. Then in the top of the ninth inning, Gary Carter will give them the 2-1 to one lead. As he is of course, a former Met. It's his eighth home run of the season, RBI number 22. That one coming off of reliever Jay Howell. That made it 2-1 to one San Francisco as you take one more look at the home run swing by Gary Carter. In the bottom of the ninth inning, Don Robinson, who threw a five-hitter in this one, make that a four-hitter, strikes out Cal Daniels looking. Cal not too happy with the call. Let's Dana DeMuth know about it. And Dana DeMuth, here's something that he doesn't like. And he sends Cal Daniels to the showers a little bit early as he tosses him from the game. Well, that just made Cal Daniels all the more angry as Tommy Lasorda and Joe Amalfitano hold him back as he wanted a piece of Dana DeMuth. Well, Don Robinson got the complete game victory in this one. As mentioned, threw a four-hitter to run his record to 8-1. and one. Here he gets 
Eddie Murray to pop out to end it. The final, two to one San Francisco as Don Robinson picks up his 100th career. Afternoon at Wrigley Field in Chicago, the Cubs are hosting the Pittsburgh Pirates. And in the bottom of the second inning, the Cubs score a pair of runs with one out and Rick Reed pitching for Pittsburgh. Joe Girardi, the batter, he singles in the shallow center field. Scoring on the play is Luis Salazar as he gets in there ahead of the throw. So the ball gets away from Mike LaVallier. Andy Van Slyke with the throw. It was 1-0 Chicago. Next batter up would be pitcher Greg Maddox and a great play coming up here by Jose Chico Lean. As he goes in the hole, but he can't get Maddox down there at first base. But a great play nonetheless as Maddox gets the infield single. And moving over to third base was Joe Girardi on the play. And one more look at the great play by Jose Lean. Joe Girardi wouldn't make it home because Doug DeCenzo would try to squeeze him home. He would get caught in a rundown. So with two outs and still in the bottom of the second inning, Ryan Sandberg hits this one off of Bobby Bonilla's glove. Greg Maddox comes around to score the second cub run, and they let it two to nothing. Thanks to Ryan Sandberg, or thanks to Bobby Bonilla's error. So they let two nothing after two innings. And these two guys' seats may be 455 feet from home plate, but at least they're free. Well, in the bottom of the fifth inning, the batter is Luis Salazar, and he'll take this one about 360 feet in the left field for his eighth home run of the season as Dave Clark was aboard. There was one out, RBIs number 33 and 34. That gave the Cubs a 4 to nothing lead in the bottom of the fifth. The Cubs aren't having such a great year, but they're having a good day. This Cub fan has turned to cheering for the Pirates. Well, he's just kidding. He likes the Cubs. Once a Cubs fan, always a Cubs fan. Bottom of the eighth inning with one on and one out. Greg Maddox hits the chopper. Scott Ruskin comes up, but Bobby Bonilla calls him off and then throws it into right field for his second error on the day. Coming around to score ahead of R.J. Reynolds' throw is Shaw and Dunstan. So that's an error on Bonilla, and it's 5 nothing Cubs. Moving to the top of the ninth inning now, Greg Maddox, who had struck out six in the game, makes Sid Bream his sixth strikeout victim, his first strikeout since the fourth inning, the first out in the top of the ninth inning. And Greg Maddox would get some nice defensive help from his shortstop, Shaw and Dunstan. Mike Lavalier, the batter, he hits it in the hole. Dunstan dives and then gets up and guns over to first. He's got one of those rocket arms. Of course, Mike Lavalier, not one of the speediest guys in the world, as he guns it over to first and gets him for the second out in the inning. Greg Maddox went all the way for the complete game shutout. It's his second shutout of the season, his fourth complete game. Here he finishes things up by getting Jose Lean to hit one right back up the box. But Maddox manages to field it and throw it over to Mark Grace for the final out. Maddox is now 8-9. and nine. Rick Reed took the loss. He's 2-3. and three, And the Cubs win 5-0 on the five-hit shutout pitching of Greg Maddox. Gino Petralli in the top of the second would give the Rangers an early lead as he would single off Milwaukee starter Ron Robinson. And this scores Jeff Kunkel and then Gary Pettis. Milwaukee with a 2-0 lead. Look in the Ranger dugout at Nolan Ryan and Julio Franco. Franco's two errors in the eighth inning on Tuesday led to an early departure by Ryan. Then in the top of the fifth, the score, 3-0 Rangers. And then Jack Dougherty would double to right field as this goes off the fence and over the head of Rob Deere. It would score Ruben Sierra to make it a 4-0 Texas lead. And the Rangers scoring three times in the top of the fifth lead at 5-0 after five. In the bottom of the sixth, the Brewers would score their lone run of the game as Rob Deere would single to left field. This scores Gary Sheffield, and it's a 5-1 to one Texas lead. But that's all the Rangers would allow in this game. Charlie Huff would work eight innings, striking out four Brewers, including Paul Molitor here in the bottom of the seventh. Then in the top of the eighth with a score of 6-1 Texas, Rafael Palmero bats with the bases loaded, and he singles to score Pettis and then Jeff Hewson. And that makes it an 8-1 Texas lead. They go on to win it 8-2 to sweep the three-game set. Huff, the winner, 8-7. and seven. Robinson, the loser, is 4-3. and three. And Bobby Witt has a new way of putting on his hat. August 2nd, 1979, was a sad day for baseball. Yankee captain Thurman Munson tragically died at the age of 32. Munson was a consummate catcher, gritty, determined, relentless. More than hitting and fielding, Munson was the heart and soul of the Yankees. His loss was greatly felt by the Yankees, their fans, and the nation as a whole. From 1969 through 79, Thurman Munson was the backstop and backbone of the New York Yankees.